I want you to turn in your Bible to the book of Haggai, the Old Testament. No, nope. we're going to turn to the book of, yeah, Haggai. That's right. I'm, I'm at the right place. Haggai. The prophet Haggai. I'm going to look at the second, the second chapter of the book of Haggai. And I believe the Lord is given, is, has, a, has a word for us today prophetically that he will speak to us. Uh, we're going we're gonna to start at the first verse. It says, and in the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, speak now. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was supposed to do something else. I was supposed to do something else. Um, and they probably already... Come here. You know, I want uh, Brother Luther to give a testimony. Give a testimony of what God confirming something that the Lord said last week. God bless you. Needs his mic on. Can y'all get his mic on? Maybe just take take this mic. Your privilege, you're gonna use my mic. <laughs> Good morning, Living Bread family. I wanted just to share and confirm the word of the Lord from last week. Um, I give praise and thanks to God because a few years ago, about a couple of years ago, I'm a part of a, uh, I'm a candidate of a program partnership with the Michigan Department of Education uh, Eastern Michigan University and the Washtenaw Intermediate School District to increase more teachers to work with students with emotional behavioral disorders and impairments. So I'm working on my licensure and certification for that because we see an increase, especially after the pandemic and us navigating through that, we see an increase with mental health disorders. And so, Apostle, as you were ministering last week, and also mm -hmm. to mention, y'all, because I'm a candidate of this program, I don't have to pay for this degree. It Praise was paid God. for and funded by the Michigan Department of Praise Education. Praise God. Amen. So that's one testament of God's manifestation. But, Apostle, as you were ministering last week, and you were talking about your journey and how you... Uh, your initial journey of becoming an appraiser for HUD. Mm -hmm. And you went and you showed up at that building and the man, the director told you, hey, today's your lucky day, paraphrasing, <laughs> and that there was going to be a test next week. And as you were ministering, little did you know that Tuesday I was registered to take my state certification, mm. to take the examination to receive the certification. Wow. And as you broke down revelation, how God presents his promises, and he breaks down and he reveals Little do you guys know, I had a dream that Saturday, and I was so stressed out that I was sick in my body, and the Lord began to reveal to me that I was going to pass the test, but I still had fear and apprehension, mm -hmm. as Abraham did, and even laughed at the fact that how could this be feasible, and how could this be possible? Mm -hmm. When I started college 15 years ago, my initial degree was in education. But because of rejection and trying to make things work, I changed my degree and got a, went to seminary. And, you know, God worked that out. That was a, mm -hmm. you know, bringing it into a perspective. That was my moment in wrongdoing as Abraham produced the Ishmael. Mm -hmm. And so as God came back around 15 years later and said, I'll pay for your education. And you will do what I told you to do when you were a child. Mm -hmm. So when I went and took the test Tuesday, Apostle, anxiety racked through my body. Mm. I became what I studied. Many of you guys know there's a lot of students that are impaired and have diagnosis of attention deficit hyperactive disorder. And I felt like I was one of my students, ADHD. <laughs> I could not calm my body down. I text prophets, hold me up. But the Lord reminded me of your sermon that morning. And I listened to that sermon. And little do you know, there were key words that you mentioned in the sermon mm. that were answers to the test. Praise God. So as I walked out 
and receive the notification of my preliminary results, you are now looking at a certified teacher that is able to work with students with emotional impairment due to the word of the Lord that our man of God released. And I encourage each and every one of you to go back and listen to those sermons. You will hear the answers and solutions to how you will overcome and believe the prophet, believe the apostle, and so shall you prosper. Thank Praise you, apostle. God. Bless you. Thank you, son. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that I thank God, I try to hear God before I minister. It's one of the things that I learned from one of my mentors, uh, James Taylor, is he said that you have to spend more time in prayer than the time you're going to minister the word because you need to hear from God. How many want a word from the Lord? You know, I remember I went to the book to the Bible bookstore years ago and they had sermons that you could buy. You could buy a sermon. But you, we need the word of the Lord. Amen. So let's look again at, at Haggai. I believe that the Lord has given us some. And starting at the first verse of the second chapter of the book of Haggai, it says, And in the seventh month and in the one and twentieth day of the month came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Zeshetel, governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in the first glory? In her first glory and how do you see it now is it not in your eyes in the comparison of it as nothing yet now be strong O Zerubbabel saith the Lord and be strong O Joshua son of Josedek the high priest and be strong all ye people of the land saith the Lord and work for I am with you saith the Lord of hosts according to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt so my spirit remaineth among you fear ye not for thus saith the Lord of hosts yet once it is a little while and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all the nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater, of the form, greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. I want, I, want to, I, want to, I want to just uh, speak. The Lord spoke this, this word to me, and, the, and, and, and he spoke this phrase in my spirit, and I believe that it is significant. He, he spoke this, and I, and, I, and I typed it up in my, in my notes in my, uh, in my uh, uh, phone, and this is what he said. He said, it will be better than before. Somebody say, better than before. In other words, here we see in Haggai that the, this is during a, the season when uh, the Darius was the, the uh, king of, of Persia and, and, he had, and the covenant had been made uh, with the, the, the Persian king that they would rebuild Cyrus, the Persian king, that they would rebuild the temple of God. And they had begun to build the temple of God. They had begun to do the work of the temple. But however, they had been uh, 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 confronted with uh, opposition. How many know that there's always opposition to, to when you're trying to do something for the kingdom of God? And so there was, uh, there was a lot of opposition, and, and, they, and, and they ceased. And, uh, and then eventually Ezra and uh, 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 ro rose up and began to speak. You, when you read the book of Haggai, Ezra, and, and you read the book of Haggai and Zechariah, it's really those books are, are very, very uh, uh, connected. And, uh, and so the Lord is speaking to, to them in Haggai. In the first chapter, he's talking about uh, what they did not do that caused them to be in the situation that they were. And he goes on to talk about uh, the fact of that they were dealing with uh, 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 fleeting resources. 
He said that, that, that uh, you're, you're in your houses, you're in your beautiful sealed houses, but what about my house? And, and they, he began to chastise them in Haggai, the first chapter. And he began to tell them that, you know, you're saying, should the house of the Lord be built? And, and he's telling them that you're living in your house, you're doing, and, and you're allowing my house to go barren. And he goes on to talk about that the judgment of God was upon them, the curse of God. They were sowing much, but they were bringing in a little. Uh, they, were, uh, they, they didn't have enough to eat, didn't have enough to drink. Uh, they, their clothes didn't fit anymore. They were earning wages and putting it in bags of holes. And he's chastising them for the fact that they're not building the house of God. And then in the second chapter, he goes on to, to prophesy, and he goes on to say, first of all, he, he prophesies saying, uh, the Lord is saying to speak, verse 2 says, to Zerubbabel, the son of Jachiel, the governor of Judah, to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people. And so he was, not, he was speaking to the government of the, of, 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 the, of, the, of the church. He was speaking to the, to the leadership of the church. He was speaking to the residue of the people. So this message today is not for just the leaders. It's not just for uh, the, the, uh, 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 the government, but it's also for the residue of the people. And then he goes on, and, and this is the question these are the things, the question that he had. He said, who is left among you that saw the house in its first glory? How do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes as in comparison? Nothing. And one of the things that the Lord spoke into my heart, he said, ask the people, how do they see? Because it's important to know how you see in order for God to, to, to accomplish what he wants to accomplish in your life. He didn't say, what do you see? He says, how do you see? Because it's how you see it is to whether or not you're going to experience the blessing and what God has for you. Some of us, we don't see right. Remember when Jesus touched the blind man that ha he, he, he put the uh, and he asked the blind man after he take the, 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 the uh, spittle and put it on his eye. He said, he said, do you see anything? Or what do you see? And he said, I see men as trees. How he saw was not correct. He saw, but it was how he saw. So how you see has to do not just with the mechanics of your eyes, yet your eyes are healthy, but it also has something to do with your mind because your eyes see, but the interpretation of what you see is an act of your mind. And so how do you see? How do you see? He said, how do you see, and, and, and many times, and what he's, what he's saying is, is, is how do you see now? In other words, how does it look now? How do you see? What is your perception of what is happening now? Because you can, you can see, you can have eyes to see, but if your mind and your interpretation and your perspective is incorrect, then you, how you see is going to be determined. It's amazing that two people can look at the same situation and come out with a different answer, with a different interpretation because of their perspective. If you're, if you're looking at, praise God, something, praise God, that seems to be negative, if you don't know how to interpret it, if you don't interpret it correctly, you will not benefit from that situation. I say this often that one of the worst things is for you to go through something and come out and and praise God and not learn anything. Let me, before I go into to, to the rest of this, this, this uh, exegesis of, of Haggai, in, in, Psalms, 105, in Psalms 105, it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting, uh, it's a very interesting uh, um, uh, segment that talks about Joseph, and it says, praise God, that God, in verse 17 of, of Psalms 105, it says, And he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet was hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. Now, 
how you see things is important. This tells us that the word of the Lord that came, the dream that, that Joseph had, that he would rule over his brothers, his father, his mother, that he would be a ruler over them, that word, praise God, it took, as I've said before, it took 13 years before that word was fulfilled. And the Bible says here that until that word was fulfilled, the word of the Lord tried him. And so, praise God, the word of the Lord that God has said what he would do in the house here. He has said what he would do in your life. But that word must be tried. And I was looking up that word in, 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 uh, in, in, in Strong's Concordance, and it, and it literally says... Uh, that that word means to be uh, tested. It means to be refined. It means, praise God. In fact, let me look at that right, right quick. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just going to go there because I want you to, 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 to get a picture of, of, of this being tried. Because some of your word, the word, when the word of the Lord, when God tells you he's going to do something for you, that word before it will ever come to pass, it must be tried. It must be refined. It, you, it, that word has to go through some things before God releases that answer or releases, praise God, the manifestation of that word. And so in Psalms 105, praise God, and, and 17, and if you in the in the um, uh, in the Strong's Concordance, it says, "Praise God." In verse seventeen, and he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold as a servant, whose feet was in fetters and laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord was tried. That word there is S R S A R A P, and it means to refined. It means. It, it, it's a word interpreted, it, it, it's, a, it's interpreted goldsmith. You know, when, when gold is, when it, you get original gold out of, the, out of the, the, the ground, that gold is very, very expensive. It is very, very valuable. But until that word, uh, excuse me, until that gold is put in the fire and refined, refined means that when the gold is put into the fire, all of the impurities that are in the gold, everything that is in the gold that is not, praise God, uh, uh, gold will literally be burned up. It will be refined. In other words, it takes out all the impurities. It takes all, all of the fake materials out of it. And it becomes pure. And one of the, 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 uh, the, the interpretation of that word tried is to purify. In other words, God will do certain things to purify, to refine. He will, that word will have to be tried. And how was Joseph's word tried first? It was tried because his brothers hated him. It was tried because he was thrown into the pit. It was tried because he was sold into slavery. It was tried because he was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife and ended up in prison. That word was tried. Some of you, praise God, has been going through the trial period of your word. You've gotten a prophetic word that says you're going to be blessed above, you're going to be above only and not believe, you're going to be rich, you're going to walk in millions and millions of dollars and praise God and you haven't seen it yet, praise God. But that word must be tried, refined. It must be put to the test. And so praise God. It, it, it also it's interpreted in the authorized version as to try it. It's got to be tried. It's, 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 a, it's refined. It has to be melted and purified. It has to be purged away. In other words, praise God, this, the word that came to Joseph had to go through a process of refinement. And so, praise God, I believe that for the last several years, we've been going through a process of refinement. Amen? God had to try that word. He had to make sure that he got out of you things that he needed to get out of you. Some folks think that because God called the ministry, that automatically, praise God, they're ready for ministry. But many times what God will do is God will take you through hell and high water. He'll take you through the fire, through the flood, 
He'll take you through everything before that ministry is manifest because he's trying to purify. He's trying to refine. He's trying to get things out of you that's in you. Praise God. Some of us think we're ready when we heard God's voice, but we wasn't ready. Joseph was not ready, and praise God. So that word had to be tried. It had to be refined. It had to be, praise God, tested. It had to be go through the fire. Some of you have went through the fire, the flood, and everything else. I don't know about you, but I've been through fires, floods, tsunamis. I know some of you know, you know, you know, I know you, you some people think, praise God, that 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 when they got saved, everything was just gonna be perfect, everything was just gonna be wonderful, praise God. And all hell broke loose. You know, the Bible says when, when the word of the Lord comes, immediately the devil comes to steal the word. You know, sometimes we have to understand, praise God, that there is a process. There's, a, that there's some things you have to go through. And so Haggai is prophesying here in the second chapter. He's prophesying to the government, to the leaders, uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the judicial government of, of Judah. He's talking to the priest. He's talking to the people. It's, it's to all of them. And he's telling them, how do you see? Do you see things, praise God, the way that I want you to see them? If you look at what it, the way it looks now, praise God, how do you see them now? He says, is it in your eyes there's in comparison, nothing. The first house had glory in it, man, praise God. But now everything looks bleak. Everything looks like, praise God, that it's in ruin. Everything looks like it's tore up from the flow up. It looks like it's messed up, praise God. And now, praise God, God is saying that he's prophesying to, Jeruz to, to, uh, to, to Zerubbabel and to Joshua, and, and he's saying to them, praise God, that I'm about to shake the nations. I'm about to shake the heavens. I'm about to shake everything up. I'm about to change this thing. You know, sometimes, praise God, we think that, you know, the Bible talks about the, 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 uh, the, the, the apostles. Uh, uh, they said, the people said that they were the men that turned the world upside down. Let me tell you something. They weren't turning it upside down. They were turning it right side up. You, you upside down already. What we need is God to turn this thing around. Amen? And to turn it right side up. Because we spoke to be above and we're beneath. Now, it says, praise God, that I'm going to shake the earth, I'm going to shake the nations, I'm going to, and then he goes on to say, the silver is mine, in verse 8, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts, and, and in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. It's going to be, look at somebody say, it's going to be better than before. In other words, praise God, God's not going to allow you to live in the past of what you had, you know, yesteryears, the exploits of yesteryear. Sometimes, and there's nothing wrong with talking about the old generals and the old moves of God and so on and so forth, but God wants to have a new move of God. God wants to have a, a move of God right now. God wants to have a fresh move of God, a fresh anointing, a fresh glory, praise God. And so, praise God, the, he says, praise God, that the silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. In other words, praise God, he says, the silver is mine, the, glo the, the gold is mine. Now what I want you to see is this, is that the, the former house had glory. I believe that what God is getting ready to do in living bread and in many houses of the Lord around, uh, not only in this city, but in the nations, is God's about to do a new thing in the house of the Lord. I know that the enemy tried to shut, through COVID, tried to shut down houses of the Lord. In other words, trying to tell us we don't need places that, praise God, that are completely dedicated to God and to his kingdom. We don't need a church anymore, praise God. People are not gathering anymore. I'm going to tell you, I believe with all my heart that there's going to be a gathering there's going to be an inflow of people like never before. Churches are going to be filled to the brim again, praise God. There's going to be new need, need for new, praise God, for expansion, praise God, that the, the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. And we're not going to have to look back always and talk about what it used to be. In other words, praise God, God is, it was nothing wrong with the glory of the last house. It doesn't mean that that glory, that there was not glory. It was old glory. It was the glory, praise God, of that house. But praise God, but what God is about to do is going to be better than before. Better living bread will be better than it's ever been. 
You know, we, Sister Hogan and myself, we, we, we've been uh, kind of a little bit frustrated when we, when we see the house of the Lord. We've kind of been like Nehemiah. You know, when we come and we see, and I look, do we look at the old sign and we say, oh, Lord, we got to take that sign down. Oh, we got to do this. Oh, we got to do that. We got to do this to the church and so on and so forth. And it's a frustration that, that has been there. But the Lord began to, when I was uh, uh, at home last night, the Lord began to deal with me. He said, the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. You're not going to have to look back anymore and praise God and talk about the way it was. You know, we can live in the past. We can live in the past. Oh, oh, it was so good back then. But God says, not only am I going to restore the house, I'm going to make it better than it's ever been. Can you imagine the best time in, ever in your life? Look back and find the best, the most prosperous time, the most, the most glorious time, the most anointed time. And, and praise God and think about that and God says that that is going to be in nothing in comparison to what I'm about to do in your life in other words God is going to do something in your life that's going to be greater than anything that you've experienced before I said God do it I want to see this praise God I want to see this new glory I, I appreciate the old glory but the new glory is glory magnified. In other words, the, the latter house will have a expand, uh, an expanded glory. In other words, the new glory, the magnified glory of the house will be a house, praise God, where there will be an abundance, an abundance, praise God, of wealth, Look at what it says. It says here in verse 8, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. In other words, in this new house, there's going to be such resources, financial resources. You know, we, we, we're not going to have to worry about, praise God, how the bills are going to be paid. We ain't going to have no bills. Just the, you know, just the regular, you're going to always have, you know, your gas bills and your but, but I believe that God is about to bring some of us completely out of debt. We think we got it good. Wait until you don't have one, you don't have any debts at all when your car is paid off, your house is paid off. In other words, that's a glory that you ain't experienced before. Oh, yeah, we was able to get the mortgage and get that nice house. But just think, it's going to be better than before. Not only are you going to have that nice house, not only are you going to have, but you ain't going to have no mortgage. In other words, God's going to bless you. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. He says, all of the resources is mine. He says that before he talks about the glory of the latter house. So the glory of the, of the latter house includes financial resources in abundance. I say, I thank you, Lord. I, 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 I receive that. <laughs> the glory, praise God, of silver, gold, and it's the, then it says the glory of the latter house. So there will be resources, financial resources, that we have not seen before. I believe, praise God, I was, I was listening to a testimony in fact, I was listening to a testimony last night uh, of, of um, I was listening to, to testimony by Jerry Savelle, and he was talking about how the Lord had given him, the, the, had said to him about some land that he had, he, had, he had bought a few acres of land, and the land across, hundreds of acres across, he had said, well, you know, Lord, I, I uh, yeah, he said, the Lord said, if you will trust me, and be patient. I'll give you all that land and I'll give it to you at a price that you want to pay. You will name the price you want to pay. And I was, and, and, and as I, and he said, if you'll be patient, he said, so, so soon the land was sold to a big corporation. Corporation gets the land and, you know, and he says he, 
kind of said to the Lord, well, maybe, Lord, you didn't speak to me. You know, that's the way we get sometimes when the Lord tells us we're going to own the mall, we're going to own this, we're going to own that, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. It sounds so dr drastically out of step until we just say, you know, maybe I didn't hear God. And he said, and he said, Lord, maybe I didn't hear. And the Lord said, I told you if you'd be patient. And one of the things he said that, was that, that, I, that blessed me was he said, patience is being consistent no matter how it looks. You got to see through all of the mess, all of the junk, all of the trials, all of the situations you go through, you got to be able to see God in it. And if you and if you always every time you every time something doesn't go just like you wanted to go, your your the way you see things is, is that it's a failure. You have lost your patience. And he said that soon that company went. He looked in a, and there was a newspaper article, and that company went out of business, had declared bankruptcy. He said, "Well, oh, praise, praise the Lord." You know, he said when he first <laughs> when the, when the when the first people bought it. He said he, it was in the newspaper. He said he showed the newspaper to the Lord. He said, Lord, do you read the newspaper? He said, no, I don't read the newspaper. <laughs> See, you read the newspaper. You read all of the negative. But God ain't worried about that. God is not frustrated by circumstances that seem to be adverse or different from what he has predicted. What God says he will perform. Your word will come. It will be tried first before it comes. And he said, so he said, so he, he, he kept trusting God. He said, and they went into bankruptcy. And then somebody else bought, another corporation bought it. They bought it. And he said, but he, this time he was, he just said, you know, Lord, you said it. So I, he was consistent. You said that I would be able to buy it. Well, to make a long story short, that corporation bought it, they went bankrupt. Another corporation bought the hundred and some acres, they went bankrupt. Say so finally, he said he's ministering and, 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 and uh, he gets a call and it's a call from his business manager and he says to him, he says, I just got a call from the people that owned that, that land, uh, there was some government people I think that owned it at that point and said, they called and said, to ask you if you would be interested in buying the land. It has a $1.2 million uh, um, lien on it. Has a, hundred, a, a million. And so you got to start there, make us an offer, and then we'll, we'll talk. And so he said, so eventually what he told his business manager, he said, he said, Lord, you told me I could have it for whatever I wanted to pay for it. He said, so he said, so he told his business manager, he said, he said, call them and tell them that I want to buy the land. I'm going to pay $200,000 for it. I don't want no lien on it. The lien has to be taken off of it. And I want all the mineral rights under the land. And so his business manager called and he said, when he talked to the first people, he said, he told him, he said, Mrs. Avell says he'll pay 200000 He wants that lien removed, and he wants all the mineral rights under it. And he said, but before his business manager talked to, talk to them, he called them up. And, and before he got into that, he said, do y'all believe in miracles? <laughs> and then he told them. And they said, we ain't even going to take that to the, to the, to the higher. We ain't going to take that offer in there. And, and, he, and he said, no, you're going to take this offer there and you're gonna, and because they called us and told us to make the offer. Well, to make a long story short, he said they called him back, called the business manager back and said, we believe in miracles. <laughs> he bought the land for $200,000. They removed the lien and gave him all the mineral rights. And then as soon as he got the mineral rights to the land, he literally gets the mineral rights to the land, and there uh, a, a major gas company comes and says, there's natural gas under your land. And, and so they, they, they pay him to, 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 uh, uh, to build the, I guess, the pumpers or whatever to get the gas out. 
And he was talking about that the, 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 they, were, they were paying him like, uh, they, they paid him to, to, to do it. They paid him so many millions of dollars. And then they were paying him like, uh, 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 like a half a million dollars a month. And then they were like, and he was just, he was talking about how God had, had blessed them. And then they found out that the adjacent uh, subdivision next to it had gas under it, but you couldn't build, good, couldn't get the gas from under there because people were living in houses. So they had to build another thing on his, on his land for another 400 and something thousand dollars a month that they were b building so that he could, uh, praise God, so that they could get the gas from under their land. So millions and millions of dollars because somebody was able to see and hear the word of the Lord and no matter that three different major corporations bought the land, they all went bankrupt in order for God's man to get the land. How do you see? I cannot live my life looking, you know, some people don't have any vision at all. They only deal with what it looks like right now. But I live my life and, and when I say the mall is ours, and I've been saying it for the last 20 something years, and folk have left the church thinking that I'm crazy, but as sure as God has spoken it, uh, it shall come to pass. And the glory of this house will exceed anything that we have ever experienced in the past, will exceed in numbers, will exceed in wealth, will exceed in resources, will exceed everything and anything that we have ever experienced. How? Because that's how I see it. After I just don't see it that way. Well, there's something wrong with you. You, you, faith, it, it, when, when you talk about faith, faith is being able to see stuff that other folk can't see. So the question was, Zerubbabel said, how do you see it now? I want to give you a vision for the future. The latter house, the glory, the wealth will exceed anything that you have ever experienced before. All the things that you've been through, all of the things that we've gone through, went through foreclosure, went through, praise God, them giving us a 30-day notice to get out. We're still here, ain't we? In other words, praise God, <laughs> I know that don't excite too many people because the uh, pastor been talking about that all day. Let me tell you something. I'm going to talk about it till uh, I'll, be, I'll be giving the testimony uh, from now on because God did a miracle. God did a miracle. God canceled millions of dollars. We had a $2.2 million debt and God canceled the debt and gave us our building back because God is true to his word. So when God, when your word is being tried, you got to stay consistent. I like what the, the, the message that I got out of the testimony by Dr. Sabir was this. Is he said, the Lord said, if you will be patient, if you will be consistent to have the same kind of attitude when the trial has come as you had when everything was going well. See, some people, as soon as it goes, things go bad, they start, they get into the murmuring and complaining mode. They, didn't get, they get into the mode of, it ain't going to never happen. It's been so long. I don't think, I thank God, I think I must have missed God. And what we need to understand is, is that, that, that the word must be tried. It must be refined. God has to deal with certain things in your life. That's why you got to let God deal with you with your, the trials, the trying of your faith. The Bible talks about in Peter that the, that the trying of your faith is more precious than gold tried in the fire. Gold is, is valuable, but once it's been refined, it's, it's more valuable because it's been purified. And so he said the glory of the... So he's telling... So the, 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 it's going to be so much better. And I want to let you know that it's going to be so much better... And I'm not just saying that for, for, for living bread, but so much better for, for many of you. Some of you have been going through hell. Some of you, some of you don't know that the, that the thing that, that, that you're under, the, the trial that you're under now, is, is a testing of the word of God. You know, the thing is, is that 
if, if the word of God only works in good circumstances and in perfect weather, then praise God, it's, 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 it doesn't have very much power to it. It's when God gives you a word and, and praise God, and tell you you're going to be a millionaire and you lose everything. Tell you you're going, tell you you're going to be healed, praise God, and the doctor diagnoses you with terminal cancer. Tell you that, you, that, that, praise God, that your child is going to be saved, and praise God, and now he's strung out on drugs. But that word, while it's being tried, God is working some things on the inside of you, in the inside of me. I believe with all my heart that what God, I believe we've hit the season where we're about to see the manifestation. I thank God that I've tried to stay consistent in what I've said because I understand patience. Patience isn't just waiting around. Patience is your attitude while you're waiting. Do you have the right attitude while you're waiting? Are you waiting mad, upset? Are you, are, 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 you know, sometimes God wants to test the gift that's on the inside of you and test what's in you in the worst of circumstances. He wants to test it when it is dark, gloomy, everything is going wrong. That's where he wants to test it. And when that, when that word works in the, in the midst of all kind of fire, all kind of, of, of situations and circumstances that are against it, then you know God's word works. I know God's word works. I know God will fulfill his word. When God said to us that we would not lose anything, that we would not lose this church, his word works. His word works. That word was tried. That word was tried. We lost in court. We lost. I mean, God tried that word. I remember Sister Hogan took the word that Prophetess Curry gave her and put it on. It's in her, uh, in the, in, the, in her office, in her prayer room office, and she had it there. The Lord said, you're not going to lose anything. And then the Lord told me, he spoke to me, and he said, you're not going to lose. You're not going to lose in court. Of course, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't understand. I understand now. And we went to court, and the judge ruled against us. The, Lord, the, the, the judge said, yeah, the, the people that was trying to buy our church, you know, the, the, they, we had gotten some, uh, uh, we had made arrangements with the, with the seller, and the, and, the, and the judge just kicked our little stuff to the curb and, and, gave, and said they can, they can buy that, that building. And, and I'm going to tell you, when I sat, when the judge said that, I literally was so, so it, it hit me so until I, I came out of the courtroom. I got up, I walked out of the courtroom, sat on the bench outside. I felt like I could do chin-ups on the curve. I mean, I was so low. And I said to God, I said, you told me. I didn't, I was saying that in, inside. I didn't say that in the, I said, you told me that we would not lose in court that we would not lose this church. See, the word must be tried. <laughs> I'm telling you. And I, was, I felt so bad. And then the, 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 uh, the, 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 uh, the lenders came out with their attorneys. And, uh, and, I, and I, was, I felt so bad. And I told uh, the, 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 the guy I was dealing with, Mark, I said, I said, Mark, you know you're wrong. And he just turned with me and, oh, no, you, you got it. And, and then they sent me the notice. Say, you got to be out in 30 days. Oh, my Lord. But see, patience is staying consistent. I said, Lord, and the Lord kept reminding me, he said, I, I told you what I told you. <laughs> you, know, you know, the Lord don't bite his tongue. He ain't worried about the circumstances. And I'll never forget it. I felt so bad. And I, and I you know, we, I thought, you know, we, it's, it's just over. I came home that day, and when I told Sister Hogan, I said, she said, what, what was going on? And, she, she, and, 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 and when I told her, she, she literally fell. I caught her. She literally fell. I mean, it was like, God, what? 
and, and I, I, I don't have to give her testimony, but I'll give a little bit of it anyway. But she was saying, she told God, <laughs> Lord, you told us. See, that word is going to be tried. You're going to have to be the one to be patient enough and stay strong. And she said the Lord, while she was, she had talked to the Lord and everything, and then finally the Lord spoke to her while she was in the shower and said, stagger not at the promises of God. Don't you stagger at my promise. If I told you something, stick with it. And God turned that thing around. I got a call from my attorney. He said, the judge said, come in her chambers. He said, you pray. I'm going down. They went into the chambers. They came out of the chambers. And the judge had said that because the people that were going to try to, that were buying our church, they, the, the and I, 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 I didn't give this testimony over and over again, but I'm going to give it again. <laughs> the people that were buying our church, that had made the offer, was buying it for cash, I got a call from, from, uh, from Bishop Billy, Jesus Tabernacle, over on the east side. We, we both, uh, we had befriended one another. I had ministered for him. He called me. He was in Arizona. He called me. He said, I'm in Arizona, and I'm sitting out here, and the Lord told me to call you, apostle, and tell you, you're not going to lose your church. He said, I don't know what's going on. He said, but God told me to call you and tell you. See, God, when God speaks... It doesn't mean that circumstances won't, won't look like it's not going to happen. And when he called me, I told, he said, what's going on? And I told him, I said, well, you know, they got an offer on the building. And, and I said, but God's been telling us that. He's been telling us we're going we gonna, to we gonna get it. I said, I've been telling the church, you know. And here, it's hard when you're telling the church and they're looking at you crosswise. It's hard when, the, when, the, when your members are looking at you like, has pastor lost his mind? Is he, is he all there now? Is, he, is, he, is it all? Is it mean that he lost it? And he said to me, he said, he said, but God told me, he said, I don't care what is going on. He said, I'm going to tell you, God said you're not going to lose it. I said, I, said I, I, I believe it. Got off the phone 30 minutes later, he calls me back. Calls me back on the phone. I don't know who I'm helping, but I'm helping somebody here. He calls me back on the phone and he says, because we didn't, I didn't even know who, uh, uh, you know, I didn't know who was even uh, buying the church. I didn't know who the, who the, uh, who the person was because the, they had a realtor that was dealing with them and so on. And he called me, and Bishop called me back and said, Apostle, I know who's trying to buy your church. Now, see, you, the, 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 these, are, these are divine, there ain't no coincidence. These are divine setups. And he says to me, he said, I know who's buying your church. He said, well, and, and, and I never even asked him how he found out until later when we went out to dinner later after we got our church back. We went out to dinner. And, he, and then I said, how did you know? <laughs> and he told me, he said, he, said, he said, when I got off the phone with you, he said, my son plays for a church. You know, son plays. He said, he plays for another church. He said, and, I, and, and, and he told me who the church pa pastor was when we were out to dinner. He said, and so when I got off the phone with you, and he, and he said, I thought about it, that, that Bishop so-and-so had told me that he was buying a church in Redford. He said, and he put two and two together and said, he said, so he called him up and he said, Bishop, what church are you buying? He said, I'm buying Living Bread Church. He said, he said, I told him, I said, that ain't your church. That ain't your church, God. That's, that's Apostle Hogan's church. And, he, so, and when he called, so when he called me back, he said, I, I told him, I gave him your number. And, and you know, that bishop called me on the phone. And you, know, you know, that ain't no coincidence. God set that thing up. How would I be? He's out on his vacation in, in Arizona. He said, I'm out here on the on the pat on the on the on the uh, the little terrace relaxing. And God says, call Apostle Hogan and tell him he's not gonna lose his church. 
Ooh, God is good. <laughs> y'all don't, I don't know if y'all know the God that I know. But I know a God that when he speaks, it doesn't make a difference how many demons, how many devils. It doesn't make a difference what people say. It doesn't make a difference what the government says. It doesn't make a difference what the judge says. He is a lawyer in the courtroom. He's a doctor in the sick room. And he was my lawyer. He, said, he, he, he told me, and so the pastor called me. He said, he said, what's going on, apostle? I told him, I said, well, we, I told him we had this agreement with them. I said, and so on and so forth. And he said, they told me that y'all was just moving to another place. That's what they told me. So he said, he said, I'll get back with you. And make a long story short, he called me. I was... I was at, I was at uh, Sam's Club. <laughs> I think I was at Sam's Club. He called me on the phone and said, Apostle? He said, we got our deposit back. We are not going to buy that church. That church is your church. You do what God told you to do in that church. Every time I think about it, I think about how great God is. I think about how great God is. They had sent us a 30-day notice that said, be out in 30 days. God turned that thing around in so, in so quickly. And then the, then the judge called, then my lawyer called me and said, the judge called us back into court. The judge went in there, and then he told me what happened. They went in the judge's chambers, and the judge said to, the, to, to those people, said, look, because the other people, they, they, pulled, they pulled out. And the judge said, those people are gone. He said, and you need to, he said, and, and, and the judge, she, she said, you need to give these people an opportunity to get their church back. And she, get, and she issued a stipulation saying that they have 30 days. Now, now what, what they didn't know is God had already been, I had already been working on the other end and arranging financing. And so we ended up, we had a $2.2 million note. God, and so we, we made them an offer. We ended up buying our church back. For five hundred and sixty thousand dollars, God canceled million over uh, one point seven million dollars of debt. God canceled it because His word is true. And then, what the Lord, did, as I was preparing for the, the Lord said, "Now, what I'm getting ready to do in Living Bread now, <laughs> you thought you'd seen something." You ain't seen nothing yet. The glory of this latter house, I believe with all my heart that we're in the season. Prophetess, I believe it with all my heart. I can't help but believe it. It's in, I believe it in my bones. I believe it down to the tip of my toes. I know God is getting ready to do something exceptional. And all of the, uh, God said something to, to us to Pastor Joyce and myself, he said, I am going to vindicate you. Yes. And you know what vindication means? He's going to show that we were right. Yes. Vindication is when God shows to everybody else that what, that, that what we said was right. All of the naysayers, all of the ones that counted us out, all of the ones that said it would never happen, all of the ones that said we were going out of business, all of the ones that were praying for us to lose the building. God said, I'm going to vindicate you. Some of you need vindication. You need vindication because even your relatives think you crazy. Your family think you crazy. And here it is when God vindicates you is when he gets, when he does what, he's, what, he, what he said he would do. I can't wait until we close on the mall. I can't wait till we build the Family Life Center. I can't wait, praise God, until, praise, when folk come back, they're going to be saying, what in the world? Because God's word is true. 
God got rid of the, and, and God strategically, he's already got rid of the bar. The two bars are gone. Do you know we were praying for that? COVID got rid of the, the big bar and the little bar too. Sometimes the trial that God takes you through, it, that trial will also open a door for you. We're, we're about to enter into this new glory. Come on, say new glory. Glory of wealth and prosperity. The final thing that it says in here, and I'm going to close, it says in verse 9, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts, and in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord. Now, if you just look at that one, if you look at that and say God's going to give peace, that word there is shalom. That word there is shalom. It is a, it is a, 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 uh, it is a word that speaks to, it speaks to being prosperous. It speaks to being whole. It speaks, praise God, to being healthy. In other words, praise God, it's, it's a, that word is an all-encompassing word. In this new house, in this new place that God is bringing us into, corporately, individually, is a place where shalom will be prominent in that place. They, they, let, let me... Let me uh, let me just do this. I want to look this word, shalom, this word up. It said that they will give, I will give them peace. And it's in verse number nine. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to show you what this word means, and then I'm going to be done. It says, nine, verse nine, the glory of the latter house shall be greater then the former said the Lord of hosts. And in this place, the place that God is taking us, in this place will I give peace, said the Lord. That word is shalom. It means happy. In other words, the place that God is taking you, you're going to be, you're going to have happiness. No more sadness. It also means health. In other words, this place that God has taken us to is going to be a, a healthy place. And then also it speaks of prosperity. It speaks of wealth. It speaks of rest. It speaks of wholeness. In other words, praise God, the place that God will bring us to will be a place of total and complete happiness. It will be a place of total and complete Prosperity, complete favor. One of the words for this word shalom is, is, is definition is favor. In other words, praise God, we're entering into this season that God's favor, God's health, God's happiness, God's joy, God's peace, God's, God's prosperity, God's wealth, wealth will be released. Come on, stand on your feet. How many ready for that place? Go to that, ready for that place to be manifest in your life. And let me say this, is that all the hell you've been through going to be worth it? <laughs> you know, I ain't going through all of this so that I can just, praise God, always be going through trials and tribulations. But my, that, this word has been tested. I have proved the word of God over and over again in my life. I talked about the church, but I could talk about over, over just testimony after testimony. I have proved that God's word is true. God will do what he said he was going to do in your life. God is going to open the doors for you in your life. And all of the trials and tribulations that you've been through have been given to you to refine you, to perfect you, to, to, to remove the things that would hinder and so when God gets through taking you through the test and the trial, you enter into that season, praise God, of, and the set time of God releasing his blessing over your life. 
And then God takes you to a place not of, you know, where you've already been, but better than you've ever been before. It's going to be better. It's going to be better than, than you know, if you, if you chronicle all those old years. Oh, it was good in, in 99, 92. 92 was a good year. You know, somebody always looking back. But I want to get you to start looking forward. Where you look into a place that everything is better. Better than it's ever been. House paid off. Car paid off. 